So I figured I haven't done an opinion piece in a while, and there's been a lot of discourse on X and just in general about Next.js. People don't like it. I have posted videos where I complain about it. But in all honesty, if you look at my videos, there's a reason why I keep on building stuff with Next.js. And I want to kind of walk through some of those bullet points. You can kind of call me out if you think some of these are dumb. But these are just my opinions, and I think that it's why I keep coming back to Next.js. Okay, so we're gonna make a list here. Why I still choose Next.js. And there's a lot of options out there. You can use like Laravel, which I played around with recently. I liked it a lot. But after using it for a couple of days, I, you know, I just went back to my normal Next stuff because that's just what I'm familiar with. And the first thing I wanna kind of talk about is sunk cost fallacy. Okay, and I don't know if this is the best term for it, um, but I have spent a lot of time working with React on my side channel and also my full-time job, right? So I already have a lot of knowledge in React, although I feel like I'm a noob at it sometimes. I have a lot of knowledge in React and Node.js in JavaScript in TypeScript. And so I feel that all of the years I put into learning this just to potentially switch over to something else like Vue or Next or Svelte or Solid or I, I don't know, PHP and Laravel or Phoenix, there is a huge cost for me personally, trying to switch over to something else. And if I already spent a ton of time feeling like I'm actually like good at a certain stack, then to be honest, for me to switch over to something else, for example, I'll do Laravel as an example. For me to switch over to Laravel, I'd have to relearn a new language like PHP. Although I'd done PHP development a long time ago. I'd have to relearn the MVC pattern for traditional web apps. I have to learn Livewire. I have to learn the new RM approach. I have to learn how to use their Laravel framework to you know, set up the adapters and configuration, how to deploy it. I've never deployed a Laravel app, so I have to learn that. And the list just keeps going on. There's a lot of stuff that I'm gonna end up having to learn, and it's gonna boil down to the exact same stuff I already know, just a different approach, same outcome. So to wrap this part up, I already know React. Let me write this. I already spent years working in React. React has paid my bills for a long time now. And I also should say Node and Node. Does it mean it's the best solution? No, it just means that me personally, it keeps my lights on and I'm not gonna just switch over to something that I don't personally have a proven track record of keeping my lights on, okay? And then also um, I have multiple side projects using Next.js slash React. And I like to come back to these side projects and try to improve them, try to upgrade them, try to add new functionality and features. And the moment I branch off and start using something new, that's when I'm adding more cognitive load for maintainability for these various solutions. And that's something I'm trying to avoid, right? And this, this stuff might seem like, okay, it's just sunk cost fallacy, but personally, there are legit software teams that have these same issues, right? They might have a bunch of developers who already have a certain skill set and telling them to completely switch over to something else, there's going to be a lot of edge cases they're going to run into, a lot of things they have to understand and learn, and sometimes it's just not worth it, right? And personally, there's some things I don't like about React. I think the use effect stuff is kind of complicated. I think uh, the hooks are kind of complicated. The state management can be a little bit verbose compared to, like, view. But overall, once you just bite the bullet and just start writing it, like, it's not that bad. You get used to it. It's very composable, which I like as well. And again, this is supposed to be a talk about Next.js not just React, so let's try to keep it at that. Okay, so for Next.js, I'm gonna go ahead and say simple to maintain. And when I say maintain, I mean like every upgrade path that they have released, you don't have to do it, right? You can opt in to all the different versions that are being published. At first we had the pages router and then we have the beta app router. They're not forcing you to upgrade. And then they have server actions. They're not forcing you to use server actions. You still have ways to create APIs. You still have ways to just use an external API if you want to. So there's a lot of ways that this is still maintained and it's also maintained by a large company. So depending on your experience with Next.js, you might say this is not simple to maintain. Like every version uh, they release is just more stuff you have to like learn. But it was very easy for me to translate my pages directory to app directory uh, with some little bit of caveats once you're into them. So I think it's easy to maintain. And in terms of deploying this, I mean, the deployment path is also very easy. I like to deploy in a VPS right now. And honestly, all I do, I use Railway to deploy my stuff, but any VPS that you're using, you just point it to your Git repo and it'll just run your Next.js application. They have documentation of how you want to Dockerize this. The docs are pretty good. I know people complain about the Next docs. 
But I think the docks are actually very good once you get used to them, you read through them, you know how to search through them. Um, they have examples all over their project in the repo about how to do different stuff with Next.js. That leads me to my next point of strong-ish ecosystem. Now, now, the reason I'm saying strong-ish is because there's other ecosystems that are actually a lot, lot stronger, like Laravel. That community is probably like the strongest ecosystem I've run into. They have like one unified, solidified solution that has every package and library you might need for your application. I think the JavaScript ecosystem has a strong-ish ecosystem. It's just very fragmented. And so why I'm putting this is because typically if I think about something that I need, I can just go Google it. There's going to be an NPM package. This is very rarely that I haven't found an NPM package that works with Next.js or works with uh, React. Or it might take a little bit of work to just wrap it in a component, put use client at the top, and it just works perfectly fine inside of my application. So that's something I do like about that. And also there's just tons of documents and tutorials online. So tons of existing packages, tons of blog posts, tons of tutorials. And I think this is something that a lot of other languages and ecosystems can learn from. If you want your ecosystem or your library or framework to become popular, you have to produce a ton of free resources that help teach people about your framework. And it just turns out that there's a lot of people who tend to use Next.js on YouTube. And there's a lot of people who tend to make tutorials and write blog posts about it. Now I'll say that some of the ecosystems, a lot of the training resources are behind a paywall, like a monthly subscription for screencasts, which I think really hinders this aspect of a strong ecosystem. Like it's hard to onboard and train and bring people up to speed with your framework if they have to buy some type of like training material. The more free stuff that's out there, it's just the better for the ecosystem in my opinion. So let's talk a little bit about Next.js features. So obviously Next.js has a lot of features built into it, which is one reason why you might consider it a little bit complex, but for the average use case, it's not too hard, right? You make a page, you add async to your function, you can fetch some data when the page is loading and you can invoke a server action to modify your data and then basically call like revalidate path to have your page refresh. Super straightforward, but when you need some more optionality, you can opt into it, right? So I'm going to say optionality, you have server-side rendering, you have static site generation, you have incremental, there's ISR, I think it's called like incremental site regeneration or something like that. You have server actions, okay, which I personally like a lot and I'll talk about that in a second. There's just a lot of like, there's just caching built in, there's a revalidation, there's deduping built in, which again, some of these things are kind of added because of the whole nature of React server components, which, oh, that's another one, React server components, right? But the main thing I wanna talk about is the optionality. You don't have to use any particular thing, right? You can pick whatever you want, which some people hate that in the JavaScript ecosystem. I personally like it. Uh, once you get good, you can actually just pick and choose what you want. If you want like fully client-side rendering, like let's say you just want a traditional single page application, you can add that to your Next.js application. If you want to just use your file-based routing, you can do that and you can slowly start adding in server-side rendering or static site generation or ISR. All these things are optional. You don't have to, you're not forced to use any of them, which is something I like because again, you could just use Next.js for your front-end encapsulation and you can have it contact a go backend or go API if you want to. You don't have to use server actions. You don't have to use React server components. You can treat it as a traditional React single page application, which does React query to fetch and mutate your data from an external data source, which depending on your business and project needs, maybe that's something you need. Maybe you need an external Go server or you have an old Java server that you need to communicate with, right? And so I think Next.js keeps all that stuff in mind when it's building out their functionality. So the next thing, this is probably like the strongest reason why I like to stick with my current stack, which is TypeScript. I personally would never use a dynamic language again. Like I coded in JavaScript for a long time. We have like an application that got to like 350,000 lines of code all in JavaScript. And then we slowly transitioned it to TypeScript. And I would say that the TypeScript has made this project much easier to maintain. And so I've learned my lesson. I used to be a big JavaScript coffee script fanboy where I'm like, oh, types are so annoying to deal with. But once you actually learn them, they help you be much more productive in my opinion. And that's something I really like about Next.js is that they really embrace TypeScript. React is embracing TypeScript. The whole JavaScript ecosystem has embraced TypeScript. And most packages you find have first-class TypeScript support or at least JS docs that help you with some good IntelliSense. Now I've tried using some of these other like MBC frameworks like Django, Laravel, 
I haven't tried uh, Phoenix with Elixir, but from what I understand, most of these are dynamically typed languages. I know in PHP you can add types, but let's be honest, most of the libraries you're going to find and download aren't going to have types on them probably. And so the moment you start coding in these other things and you start realizing that you don't have IntelliSense as you're typing out code, you start realizing, wow, I'd rather just go back to Next.js, right? I tried that with Laravel and the TypeScript autocomplete didn't work too well with VS Code, which means, again, that's another thing I have to learn. I have to switch off of VS Code and go learn a PHP Storm or something, which I did. I installed PHP Storm. I also installed the Laravel IDEA. Um, but overall, I kept hitting random things like in the templates, in my in my Vault components where like stuff would just not autocomplete. There's just a lack of autocompletion for what I've seen in a lot of these other MVC frameworks. Granted, there's Adonis JS, which again is like first class TypeScript support. I just haven't had a chance to play around with it. I played around with it a long time ago, um, but now it's a lot more modern, has TypeScript. But again, that leads me back to sunk cost fallacy. I'm not going to switch my entire stack over to Adonis JS when I already have a bunch of projects in Next.js, honestly. And I would say a lot of these MVC frameworks, um, they also like, they pitch the idea that they come with like everything that you'd ever need. But for the most part, once you install Drizzle, like that gets you 80 or 90% away from your application. At some point, you may need to get some type of asynchronous job processing or a cron job system, which if you deploy to a VPS, I mean, you could set this up with just a simple like initialization script in Next.js. Anyway, I think I'm going off topic. So TypeScript, if whatever solution that you're going to recommend me doesn't have like lawless end-to-end -end type safety and TypeScript autocomplete, I am probably not going to actually take it seriously. Although it could be good, and I could probably spend a couple of weeks or months becoming really proficient at it like I used to be at JavaScript, but I just rather have type safety. Okay, so let's just move on to my next point. You will eventually need JavaScript, okay? This is like a hot topic for some reason. I don't understand why, but if you were to look at a majority of applications that are actually like good applications and not just fraud applications with forms, submit forms, validate forms, and read data, you're going to end up needing JavaScript, right? For example, let's say you have Trello cards. Without JavaScript, you're going to have a little bit of, uh, I would say, a harder time making everything have optimistic updates, making stuff work when a user's 3G network tab is turned on. So like Trello, uh, Figma, for example, I think Figma is actually built with like Wasm or something, but you're probably going to need JavaScript for any type of diagramming tool like Eraser IO probably uses JavaScript in a canvas to draw this stuff, right? And now you could prove me wrong here. Like you can completely call me out and say, no, we've built an application that has absolutely no JavaScript, whatever. And what you end up doing is you end up bringing in something like Alpine JS, which abstracts the way the JavaScript for you, or HTMX, which tries to abstract the way the JavaScript for you. And I'll guarantee you, even with these solutions, at some point you're going to reach an edge case where the code is just harder to maintain and so you just end up dropping into Vue or Svelte or React because you you know you embrace the idea that you have to write JavaScript because the browser runs JavaScript. That's just what I've seen over the years. Um, but again, I'm not like a, a Laravel Hotwire dev. I'm not a Phoenix Live View dev. Maybe you can actually build a complete application which has rich features um, like some of these applications without ever having to bring JavaScript. So call me out in the comments. I'm fine with that. Again, this whole talk, maybe it's just copium. Maybe I'm just coping with the fact that I'm stuck with this language because of my sunk cost fallacy. Um, another thing I want to talk about is server actions. I like server actions. And this is also a reason why people ask me why I don't use Remix. It's because it doesn't have server actions. When, when I first started learning Next.js, I actually started with like watching Theo stuff and he recommended TRPC. And then I used TRPC and I was like, wow, this is actually amazing. So I personally really liked TRPC. And I started building out applications with TRPC and I was blown away with the end-to-end -end type safety. And going forward, I don't want to have to revert back to like using traditional like do a post request to a REST API. You have no idea what the arguments are for that REST API. You have no idea what it sends back. Uh, you don't know what headers you actually need to send in. And so I think TRPC and server actions help abstract this away. Again, take what I'm saying here for server actions with a grain of salt because it all, it, it, it has context. The context that this talk is not around is I'm working on a team that needs to support mobile development, that needs to support, you know, multiple clients consuming from an API. You have to look at your business requirements and your project requirements before you just dumbly dive into using server actions, right? If you need a REST API or GraphQL, then you should probably use those. But for my use cases, 
which is I'm a one man team typically on my side projects and I need to be able to achieve as much as I can without writing much code or having to like do a bunch of context switching between d different languages. I think server actions kind of achieve that. And also TRPC, let's say you do decide that, you know, server actions is kind of two couple to Next.js. Well, you could just switch down to the TRPC, which I believe has ways to invoke your TRPC server from various different front end libraries, right? Maybe from Vue or Svelte, you can still do your TRPC requests. And so I think server actions basically replace TRPC. And that's why I'm using server actions in my tutorials. I think it, it does just help you write code faster and build out full stack applications a little bit faster, but, they, but they're also kind of new and they have like caveats to them. So I don't know, I, I like them, but there's some things that I don't like about them. Like for example, every time you call a server action, it's queued up. So if you have a UI where a user can click multiple buttons at the same time, like you'll see that it just like queues them up and it takes a long time. And then people say there's like security implications with server actions. I don't think so. Just understand how they work. It's an endpoint, right? So you need to validate your input. You need to make sure you're authorizing the user with their session before you just start doing various operations in your application. Um, so I guess I'll just say end to end type safety, which is a very, very strong selling point to me. I know you can achieve this by using like open API docs and you can just like do code generation to get your API definitions with TypeScript. But did you just hear what I said? Like that's just more complexity trying to get that all set up, right? I don't want to have to deal with having a separate REST API and then running some type of code generation script and finding out a way to how to publish that and then import that into my own application so I can use an SDK to call it. I don't want to do all that, right? And I know there's frameworks that provide that out of the box. Like I think Nest.js has that out of the box. Um, let's just, just, just move on. Yeah, so these are some of the reasons. I mean, some of these might be really weak arguments, but these are my personal reasons why I use it. I have complaints about Next.js. I'm not gonna lie about that. I have complaints about React. I'm not, I would not consider myself a React or Next.js fanboy. I, I'm a very strong critic of like, some things are just awful using React. Some things are awful using Next.js. But overall, I deal with the awfulness because there's a lot of benefits that come for me using this. Now there's one last point I wanna talk about before I wrap this up, because this video is going kind of long. I wanna be transparent with you. Well, another reason I'm using Next.js is because Next.js gets the most views in YouTube. So this last point, um, again, you're gonna be like, dude, seriously? But honestly, this is because the market, the market demands it, right? If the market is demanding a framework and I make videos about that framework, it, to me, it signals that, okay, people actually like using this, right? If I'm making videos on something that no one knows about, I'm not getting any views. Why would I keep making views about that? Because to me, if I go and start making views on HTMX, although I think HTMX is a really cool solution, if it's getting no views, to me, the community, the outside world, that kind of signals to me that people don't care about it. If people don't care about it, I'm not going to waste my time learning about it because I've been burned so many times in the JavaScript ecosystem where I learned something and it just gets abandoned after six months. And so Next.js has given me the strongest signals. And I should also say React has given me some of the strongest signals that this is still one of the most used frameworks slash libraries in this ecosystem. Um, I've tried making view videos in the past. They bomb, right? I've watched other people who make view content full time. They don't get that many views. Now, granted, there's some other channels that make content on like Laravel and stuff, and they get some pretty good views. So I think Laravel and PHP has a really strong community as well. Um, I haven't looked into some of the other stuff like, I don't know, Elixir. I haven't looked into Django. But again, I'm just being transparent with you. I'm not going to waste my time making YouTube videos if no one watches the stuff. So as, as silly as this sounds, this is also a reason why I'm using Next.js and React in a lot of my YouTube videos. If I made a Svelte video and it got as many views as Next.js or React, or if I use a Remix video or a Svelte kit or a Nux video and I got the same amount of views, I may potentially switch over because I do think those are also really valid solutions and they are a lot more concise compared to React and Next.js. But... That's just not what the market is signaling to me. So anyway, those are my points. Again, I want to keep this an open discussion. I don't want to come across as like a Next.js fanboy. I, I was transparent in the fact that there's a lot of things about it I don't like, um, but there's also a lot of things that I do like about it. And also I have my own personal reasons and opinions and contexts that keep me using it. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed watching this talk, give me a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, press the bell icon. And like always, have a good day. Happy coding.